In this live martial arts class, you're gonna discover the best martial arts weapon for street fight self-defense. In this case, it's the Japanese Joe. Now, the Japanese Joe is the middle length staff. There's the bow, which is a little bit taller than you are, and then there's the hanbo, which can kind of be like the size of a cane, about the height of a cane, 36 inches maybe. And then in the middle is the Joe. And the Joe is one of my absolute favorite weapons of all time. It's extremely versatile, doubles as a walking stick. So if you want to learn how to defend yourself using a walking stick, this is the martial arts weapon that you need to uh, practice with or train with, the Japanese Joe. We're going to start with a very simple warm up with this uh, front hand. Hello, it's good to see you guys. Standing behind your weapon, and I want you to get in this idea, street fight self-defense, you're gonna think about the principles of self-defense. Number one, situational awareness, see what's happening around you. Number two, put the weapon between you and the threat. And in this case, it's the Japanese Joe or your walking stick. It's just in your front hand, and you point your thumb in the direction of the threat. When you point your thumb in the direction of the threat, you're aiming your stick, this Joe, and you're going to push making this spearing motion first. See, I'm doing two things at once. I'm sliding it through my hand. That's because it's a shorter staff. If this were the bow, the long staff, I wouldn't have to do that. I already have the length I need. But since this is shorter and I'm starting here, it comes up here and then I'm going to push. That's one. And I'm also going to turn as it gets to, or as it's going out actually, as it's going out, I'm going to turn and as it hits, that's when I squeeze my hands so that I have the ability to control that stick. It doesn't come flying back or out of my hand this way. So the first motion that I want you to learn is this striking motion. From here, point the thumb and then push. Remember, it's forward and turning. By turning this back hand up, you're going to lock it in place. By turning it up, you're also going to accelerate the speed that is going forward. So you're gonna give your strike a lot more power. You can also step into it at the same time, pushing through the target. Now that's the next part of self-defense, street fight self-defense. Situational awareness is the first principle. Remember, there are techniques and principles. Principles are far more important than techniques. In this case, techniques using the Japanese Joe or the walking stick. But the first principle, self-defense, is situational awareness. Number two, get in a better position. Put the stick between you and the threat. Number three, take a deep breath and think about what are the targets you can strike. With this, with this first strike, think about, imagine you're going right through the throat. Right through the throat, or maybe just in the middle of the face. You're gonna hit something, hit an eye, hit a nose, smash through their teeth knock their teeth down their throat, right? From here, straight in, maybe you're hitting the solar plexus. You don't wanna hit the sternum, that's the bone. If you do, it's okay, <laughs> just hit them again. But if you hit that, it's not gonna be as effective as this soft spot here, crushing their windpipe, that's it. Fight's over, you win, or right here. It's self-defense, street fight. It's, it's, life, if it's life or death, it's you and them. Or think of it this way, you have somebody with you, somebody you care about, you love, your children, your spouse, your boyfriend, girlfriend, it's you, someone you love, or some creeper weirdo coming off the street, or a group of them attacking you. Street fight self-defense, that's the scenario you need to think about. Now, I'm using this thick one. I'm gonna show you this one. Uh, we're gonna do a specific exercise today that's gonna to give you strength, speed, power, harder strikes, better control on your Joe. But I'm gonna show you with both. This one that I got from the martial arts supply store, it's a little bit thicker, it's a little bit taller than the Joes that I normally use. I'm gonna show you also with the one that I made the other day with you. You've made your own, some of you have made your own. This is just a dowel rod from the hardware store. This one is poplar. You can get it in poplar, you can get it in oak. You get oak, it's gonna be a lot stronger, but this is also gonna work. This is about five bucks. Oak's gonna be double that, 10 bucks, nine, 10 bucks. I put a link before, uh, below if you wanted to get your own from Amazon. If they ship to you, you can get an oak dowel 48 inches tall. You can see it's not nearly as tall and it's an inch around. This is an inch and a half, almost two inches. 
somewhere between an inch. I measured it. It's closer to um, uh, an inch and three fourths, but it's it's closer to two inches than an inch and a half. And this is just an inch. Now this to me is more ideal. This I like because it's heavy and in training. If I were to walk outside, I would take this one. If I were to train in here with you, I'm gonna use this one because it's gonna stretch my hands. It's gonna give me more strength, speed, control power because of that bigger diameter and the weight. Now, we talked about situational awareness, better position, point your thumb at the threat, and then what are your targets, and then strike. We have this first one. Thicker, it's not gonna break as much, or uh, it's not as likely to break. If it's thicker, this one's not gonna break. I can hit this one just like a baseball bat all day long. This one with enough force, I'm sure I could break it. It won't after I put enough oil in it, it's gonna become more and more flexible, the more oil. And that's the other part of it. Once you get one, sand it down, start sticking some mineral oil on that, or I like um, linseed oil, cottonseed oil, you can use any kind of oil. The oil from your hands is gonna get in there the more you practice with it. But again, thicker or thinner, it's not as important as getting started. Get started with what you have or what you can get. Now, the next thing that I want you to learn today before we move on is this warm up spin. And in this case, this spin is also a striking motion. This first strike coming down here, and then that leads you into fighting with this thing very, very quickly. So I want you to learn this spin with it in front of your body. This is my left hand, my left foot's forward. I'm going to push up, pushing my thumb down, and that's going to bring the back of that forward. And then I'm going to bring it through the other side, making the figure eight. This is the same figure eight you would do with a longer staff. The difference is you're holding toward the top as you would if you were using as a walking stick, and then you're pushing forward. And just like before, your fingers are not gonna come off. They're gonna stay closed as you go around. You squeeze everything tightly, stomach up and in, get that other hand up, just so you don't hit yourself. Over here, I mean, I just hit myself in the elbow. And then after you've done about 30 seconds on one side, take it into the other side, and you're gonna do the same thing after this. Yeah, that's a good idea. Master the bow and then go into the Joe. I started with bow as a kid. I did the Joe as a young man in a jujitsu uh, class. <laughs> I had to think about it. In Cincinnati, and that's all they taught was the Joe. It's an awesome class. And those guys are really masters of the Joe. But the difference with this weapon is that very first class, all I did was practice this motion for an hour. And then I came again the next week. And that's all we did for an hour. And then I came for my third class. And that's all we did for an hour. So if you, if you I, and I don't remember when we started to do something else. I think I was allowed to do spinning somewhere in the first 10 classes or so. But that was only after learning how to move the staff, how to block, how to strike, how to do these motions. And they taught the spinning because it is also a strike. But they said it like this, and this has always stuck with me. They said, you know, a boxer doesn't do push-ups in a fight. A boxer doesn't do sit-ups in a fight. He doesn't skip rope in a fight. He fights in a fight. But in training, a boxer does push-ups, sit-ups, runs, uh, lifts weights, all those things so that when he does fight, he's stronger, faster, and knock him out with one strike. That's why you spin the staff. In this case, this becomes a strike and then it leads into more strikes that you can do with the staff, but you have to learn this basic first. So 30 seconds here. The change on this weapon, one hand just replaces the other. The right foot's forward, this is my right hand, and I'm turning my body, stomach up and in to increase speed. I squeeze my uh, abdominal muscles tighter so I can move faster, and I really wanna get this tight. All my strikes have to come right through the center line. I want to fight from behind my stick. Makes sense, right? I don't want to be out here and leave my open or my middle open. That's where you would come in and you would hit me. I'm going to stay right here through the middle. Back to the starting position from here. 
point the thumb. We have this first strike, but I want to show you one even more basic, more simple. You're walking with your walking stick or your Joe. The threat's coming in. You point your thumb at the threat, lift it, and see how I'm sliding my hand? I bring it up and I strike right down into, almost like a sword, into the threat. It's very strong. It's very powerful. It's not going to come over here like I would with the longer staff because it's not as long. From here, I have that strike. Yeah. Think about your targets. You're going to hit them here, hit them here. They have something in their hand. Knock their, whatever it is, out of their hand. Break their hand, break their wrist very quickly, very powerfully. So from here, you have that spearing motion here. Remember, you're doing two things. It's sliding almost like a pull cue through your front hand. And as it's sliding, the reason for the slide is so see that you get more length between you and the threat. You're striking through, right through the middle where the target, the uh, eyeballs, this whole part right here, right straight in the middle of the face, the throat right here. Maybe it's lower from here. It's the same motion. It's this pushing and turning of the backhand and then also turning that front hand over. The second strike comes here, just straight. And you wanna be very practical and simple. There are a lot of beautiful, esoteric, aesthetic. Esoteric means like, you know, high, uh, idealistic things that you can do with this. Aesthetic, beautiful things. It's like Aikido. Aikido. It has all of these beautiful, esoteric, aesthetic moves. It's very beautiful. But a lot of them in a street fight are not super practical. And it would take you years to master those intricate movements to get to the point where you could do the street fight self-defense using Aikido. It's not going to be as effective as boxing. Just bam, bam, two punches and get out of the way. Simple, right? This is what I want you to learn first, the simplicity. From here, point your thumb. Spear, from here, point your thumb straight down, right into the brain, right? Now the third one, I'm gonna show you one more and then we're gonna get into this practice because I want you to get really strong. Is you're gonna bring it from here, you're gonna bring it up. Just, that's all that is. Imagine if something's coming down over your head, you would wanna block up, right? But that's not where we're gonna stop. We're gonna take this front hand off of it. And I'm gonna bring it through breaking your leg, your knee, your hand, your wrist, whatever is in the way of this big heavy stick. From here, point the thumb, bring this up, and I want you to step through as you do that slicing motion. Finish it by bringing it back here. Now you're able to strike again with the same stick. So the third strike for you today, from here, blocking motion, you can either step back Slicing through to here. Your hand just comes back on it. And then you can bring it back here. Bring it down here. Bring it on the other side. Bring it back into that spearing motion. And it all starts from here. You're fighting behind your weapon. Point your thumb. Lift. You can step in. Stepping in is going to accelerate. Stepping in or back is going to accelerate the speed as your body turns that whipping motion. And that goes flying through the air, finishes here. Stepping forward or stepping back. Stepping back is going to give you distance away from the attack. Stepping in is going to bring you in closer, faster. And you're just going to devastate everything with this big heavy weapon as you go through the target into here. All right. Yeah, make sure you have a tight grip. But that's what we're working on next. That's the very next exercise. So from here, your hands are facing each other. I want you to slide one to each side. Now, with your left foot forward, this is my left hand. With your left foot forward, you're gonna lift the right hand just up over your head, and the right hand is gonna come palm up as it slides onto the top of the staff. The left hand is gonna go palm down as it slides onto the bottom of the staff. Now, this is opposite hand, it's where you started. From here, this hand's coming here, palm down, palm up. But it's over your head, and I want you to push down 
sliding your right hand along and down, accelerating the speed of the strike. It's gonna become a harder strike. At the same time, your left hand is going to turn. And this is gonna start building that wicked grip strength, power in those hands and wrists, especially when you use the heavier staff. You're gonna bring it down here. See where my hands are? So let's start from the beginning. From here, your hand in the side, left foot forward, straight up over your head, right in your middle. From here, step with the right, strike. Then slide your hands back out to the ends, bringing the left hand up, stepping forward with the left, right foot forward, left, right, left, right. You can start to move forward. And I know I'm speeding it up just a little bit. I'll slow it back down when I show you. But there's one more thing. See how my hand is coming way out to the side? I want you to get really good at keeping that in tight in your body. If you've ever been a swimmer, you know if you try to swim like this, it's very inefficient and you're gonna burn your shoulders out. You have to learn how to lift your arms out of the water with the elbows bent like this coming in. Uh, put that in the comment section, I'll respond to that about the wrists hurting. Bring it up here and down, bring it up. See, I'm now starting to clean up my elbows. That's also going to keep you from burning your shoulders and your elbows out. They're not gonna hurt as much. And they're gonna get stronger. Bring it up. One way you can test that is do that. Standing next to the wall, so my right side is next to the wall. My right side is gonna be on top, but it starts below it. And then the left side, right? That left, if you're standing next to the wall or standing next to something, when you bring that up and you try to bring your elbow out, you'll feel it. It'll force you. It's like doing a back kick. Do the back kick against the wall and you won't overturn. You won't underturn, you might overturn, but probably you'll just clean it up. From here, two, one, Two, and this is your, and you want to do this after you've warmed up and you've done some of those basic strikes for 30 seconds on each side. Burn yourself out on this. Five minutes, 10 minutes, however long you can manage, however long you have to practice. You can do this every day, over and over again. And what's happening is your hands are learning how to slide. There are all these great, like I said, beautiful moves you can do with this but you've got to master this first. And what's the purpose of this? It comes up and it's just, I mean, it's, just, it's extremely hard. It's a big, heavy stick right through their middle, cracking the skull, self-defense, three fight self-defense. From here, strike up, boom, straight down to the middle. Now you can do the same thing with your other staff if you have a dowel rod. As soon as you start to use this as a Joe, it's no longer a dowel rod. It's now, it's now a martial arts weapon that you created because you didn't want to wait until you found the perfect weapon. You didn't want to wait until some martial arts supply company started shipping to your house or you could get out of the house. You either ordered it on Amazon or you went to Home Depot or one of the hardware stores near you. And the greatest thing about a weapon like this is you really create a connection between your hands and the weapon, between your body and the weapon, your soul and the weapon, because you made it. You sanded it, you oiled it every day, and after, after you practice, by the way, oil it after you practice. Yeah, Bond, thank you. But um, if you oil it before you practice, then, um, this is a little slick, right? Slick Vic. So oil it after you practice, right before you put it away. You start to move faster and faster and faster. And the more you do this practice, the deeper that bond gets, the less likely when you go to defend yourself where you point it and you start to move it through and fight with it, the less likely it is it's going to fall out of your hand or get knocked out of your hand and hit the ground. This is going to stay with you and stay in your hands because 
of this kind of practice. And only repetitions will get you there. Don't read about it. Don't try to understand it. Don't think about it. Don't theorize. Don't criticize someone else who's doing it. But simply, again and again and again, as many times as you can, as often as you have during the day. And if you are stuck inside because of the lockdowns and shutdowns or whatever they call them, quarantines, and you have all this extra time, trade some Netflix time or some video game time or for some feeling sorry for yourself time, get up and take action over and over and over again. I'm gonna leave you with this. Starting in this position, I want you to do the spear and step into your uh, downward strike. It's like a slicing motion. And then from here, bring it into a blocking motion. So again, from here, spear, pull back, strike, pull back. And when you pull back, you're changing hand position. And then do this rotation, spiraling block, blocking motion, knock whatever they have out of their hand, start over. That's three. So from here, one, pull, your hands go to the end. Your right hand comes under, the left hand goes down. Step with the right, strike down. Go back, the hands come to the end again. Left hand palm up, right hand palm down. Pulling. You're pushing with your left hand while your right hand's turning over and under. Over and under. That's what creates that spiraling blocking motion. They have a knife or stick or sword or machete in their hand. That'll knock, knock it to the side, knock it out of their hand. Once you block, boom, it's just come straight in, spear right through the throat. One more time. From here, point your thumb, go through the target with your spear motion, bring it back, hand up, slide it down, bring it back, block this way. Now, what you saw just a moment ago, yes, I'm working on, I made one today, so we're ready. From here, when I brought it back, I kind of overshot. And that's because the other one is a little bit longer than this one. And so I just, I've been practicing all day with the other one. And it's not about making a, an excuse, it's so that you understand. I need to practice as much with all the weapons as I can, just like you do. And the more you practice, the better feel you get for every one of your weapons. So grab the Joe. If you don't have a Joe, get a dowel from the hardware store. Sand it down, five bucks, that's all you need. A little bit of sand, start to practice your basic sliding motions here. After you did your spins and your spearing motions, and your striking motions, your blocking motions, and the most basic, uh, bringing it up right through their face. And that's it. If you don't remember anything else and you're walking and there is a threat and someone enter, enters your space and you said back up and you, you know, street by self-defense, you're here. Just, that's it. Simple is best. Direct, immediate direct, explosively right across the flesh of their face for self-defense. All right, I will see you on the next one. I am working on the bow curriculum videos and I'm going to do a Thor hammer workout video next. Very excited about it. I work out with the sledgehammers all the time. Some people call it Thor's hammer. It's basically just a, a levered weight. But I'm gonna show you that, and that's gonna get you really strong for all of these strikes, whether it's the Joe, the cane, the sword, the collie stick, the nunchucks, it's all pretty much the same. You need that strength in your hands and your wrists, flexibility, healthy strength, so that you don't get injured. And I'll see you on the next one. Thanks so much.